Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Cheryl Yun. Here's a look at our top stories tonight. Hong Kong stock market tumbles by 6% to a 13-year low as investors went into panic selling mode. Chinese university makes dramatic U-turn on emblem facelift. And Rishi Sunak looks certain to become Britain's next prime minister as Boris Johnson drops out of the leadership race. There was a nightmare for investors as the Hong Kong stock market endured its worst day in more than a decade. The benchmark Hang Seng Index plunged 6.4% to hit a 13-year low as a leadership reshuffle in Beijing triggered fears of tighter regulations on private capital. Azam Khan reports. With President Xi Jinping signaling further sectorial regulation and tighter oversight on private capital wealth accumulation as part of his common prosperity agenda, investors went into panic selling mode this morning. The Han Sang Index fell below the 16,000 mark right after trading began, even nearing the 15,000 mark at one stage. It ended the day down 1,030 points, or 6.4%. The worst single-day performance since November 2008. Turnover, however, jumped to a four-month high of over $161 billion as investors went bottom fishing. (laughs) This retail investor man said there's nothing he can do about the market crash, adding that he will continue entering the market if he has extra money. We cannot be deterred by this, he said, as the stocks drop not only in Hong Kong, but around the world. The Hansang Tech Index also came crashing down, shedding over 9% to a record low. Tech giants Alibaba and Tencent both lost more than 11%, while JD.com sank 13% and Meituan 15%. Some analysts linked the unsettled tech market to possible further crackdowns on big tech companies from Beijing. The CSI 300 Index, a gauge of top stocks on the mainland, also dropped by nearly 3% today. Azam Khan, HKIBC. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed down 1,030 points. Top 10 active stocks. Tencent lost $26.60. Alibaba lost $7.95. JD.com lost $21.50. BYD Company lost $9.90. Forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, euro at 7.71, British pound at 8.87, Australian dollar at 4.94. The London FTSE is currently up 36 points. Amid the market jitters, there was still some good news as China's economy rebounded by 3.9% in the third quarter but its annual growth target now seems far-fetched. Chloe Fung reports. After a one-week delay, the National Bureau of Statistics released the much-anticipated third-quarter economic figures. Gross domestic product expanded by 3.9 percent year-on-year, beating market expectations. It was a big improvement from the 0.4 percent growth between April and June, when large-scale COVID lockdowns in cities like Shanghai disrupted economic activities. A large part of it is really state, uh, state-driven state because we have all this uh, stimulus uh, kicking into the economy. But of course, if we look at it from the other uh, angle, with the consumer sentiment remains still quite weak. He was referring to the retail sales, which improved by just 2.5 percent in September, following a 5.4 percent growth the previous months. On the bright side, industrial production grew by 6.3 percent year-on-year last month, compared to 4.2 percent in August. Fixed asset investment was up 5.9 percent in the first nine months of the year. But unemployment remains a concern, with the jobless rate worsening slightly to 5.5 percent in September. Ng also expects China to miss its annual growth target of 5.5 percent. 
if we really need to see a 5.5 percent uh, full year growth um, uh, in 2022, you will need at least 10 percent of growth in Q4, which is uh, uh, kind of impossible, especially under the current uh, policy environment. Uh, leverage is still on the radar, even though things will continue to improve, but the magnitude may not be as big as the uh, many may have expected before. He believes growth for the world's second largest economy to remain sluggish, arguing the new leadership under President Xi Jinping is shifting their focus to other areas such as common prosperity and equality. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. In other news, the Chinese university has reversed course on its new emblem just one week after announcing the facelift. A school council member welcomed the move, while a joint college student union urged the university to completely shelve the unpopular plan. Joanna Ho reports. In an abrupt U-turn, the old emblem resurfaced on the Chinese university's official website and social media pages this morning. It came just a week after new designs, including a simplified version, were published to celebrate the school's 60th anniversary next year. But some students, alumni and even council members were taken by surprise and felt they were kept in the dark about the process. Lawmaker Bill Tang, who sits on the university's governing council, welcomed the reversal. But he felt the incident highlighted problems within the school's governance. A new student union formed between student leaders from the university's eight colleges also called on the new designs be scrapped. In a statement, the group said over 90 percent of 3,600 stakeholders it interviewed objected using the new emblems. And alumnus also demanded consistency on implementing policies. I think the whole process is so erratic. Once they made that decision, I think they should stick to the plan because, you know, changing plans uh, rapidly just gives us a very bad uh, impression that they are not thinking uh, clear enough about their projects. The council will meet to discuss how to settle the emblem saga tomorrow, and a spokesperson said announcements will be made shall there be updates. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. In a case which could set a precedent, a man is appealing against his sentence over a national security law conviction. He was jailed for five years, although theoretically it could be three years and eight months because of his guilty plea. Janice Lowe reports. Back in April, Loi Sai Yu had been convicted of inciting secession over pro-independence messages he posted online in 2020. The Polytechnic University student was sentenced to five and a half years in jail, which was to be reduced by one-third to 44 months because of his guilty plea. But the court said his sentence could be no shorter than five years, the minimum penalty for a serious breach as stipulated in the national security law. The 25-year-old launched an appeal. His lawyer argued today that the five-year imprisonment was only a reference for the sentence's starting point instead of its final term, which could be reduced on mitigating factors. The prosecution disagreed and cited the criminal law on the mainland to back its case. But High Court Chief Judge Jeremy Poon pointed out the national security law can only be interpreted through common law principles. The three judges reserved their judgment and will make a decision within three months. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. Hong Kong's COVID cases have dropped slightly. There were another 5,406 infections in the past 24 hours, around 9%, or 476 of which were imported cases. The virus claimed seven more lives. The transport chief faced the music in the Legislative Council over the lack of details regarding upcoming infrastructure projects. Lam Sai Hong insisted the government will listen to public views first before deciding on their next step. Maisie Mock reports. In his maiden policy address, Chief Executive John Lee proposed a raft of mega infrastructure projects, but provided little details, such as the timeline and the cost. The transport chief denied the government had come unprepared. 
Lam Sai Hong said a public consultation on the projects will kick off this year. And after consolidating views, a blueprint will be published by the end of next year. He also explained the rationale of some of the projects, such as the Sha Tin Bypass, a road link between Tai Po and Lai Chi Kok, which could stretch more than 10 kilometers underground. Lam said with the Tolo Highway already congested during peak hours, there is a need to divert traffic away before the northern metropolis takes shape. But perhaps the most contentious proposal is the central rail link connecting Kam Tin to Kowloon Tong. Some lawmakers have questioned its viability. Including the DAB's Chan Han Pan, who suggested adding an interchange with the Chun Wan line. But Gary Zhang disagreed, saying the MTR Corporation should simply expand its rolling stock and increase service frequencies. Other lawmakers voiced concerns over the enormous cost to take forward multiple mega projects. Lam pledged to study all funding options, including issuing bonds, as well as the traditional built operate transfer method. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Overseas, it looks almost certain Rishi Sunak will become Britain's next prime minister as hopefuls raise to achieve enough backing before today's deadline. This comes after former leader Boris Johnson declared he will not be trying for a comeback. Winner Wong reports. All eyes were on Rishi Sunak today as it became increasingly clear how far ahead he was pulling from other candidate hopefuls. The race is now between him and House of Commons leader Penny Mordaunt. After former Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced yesterday he would not be seeking a second term. Sunak is leading by a mile, with over 180 members of parliament now openly declaring their support for him. Mordaunt, meanwhile, has the public backing of less than 30 members. Her campaign office claims to have reached 90, but that's still short of the 100 she needs to secure candidacy. If she fails to do so by this afternoon London time, Sunak will almost certainly become the new leader. Britain is sprinting to find a replacement for former Prime Minister Liz Truss, who resigned on Thursday after less than two months in office. The Conservative Party is also desperate to calm the drama after Truss became its fourth PM in a row to resign, marred by botched policies and political scandals. I would like a, a calm government to just run the country after Brexit, after a COVID epidemic and with the threat of uh, UK breakup of, of, of the separate states and somebody who actually represents the whole of the UK. We just need to get this sorted. We're looking at we're in embarrassment really. So, so the, like, if you look at all the other foreign press about us, it's, we, we're the laughing stock. The opposing Labour Party and the Scottish National Party have called for a general election instead of having yet another Tory leader. Winawang, HKIBC. Tension between the two Koreas continues to escalate as they exchange warning shots along a disputed Western Sea border. According to Seoul, the scuffle began when a North Korean merchant ship violated a boundary early this morning. This led to warning shots, which Pyongyang responded to by firing 10 rounds of artillery into its waters. North Korea also accused a southern naval ship of violating boundaries. The exchange is the latest in a string of provocations from the North, including the launch of over 40 ballistic missiles so far this year. On to the weather now. Expect more fine and dry conditions in the coming days. Temperatures tomorrow will range between 23 and 27 degrees. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Monday night. Join us for more news at 11. 
I'm Cheryl Yun. Thanks for watching. Good night.